I'm Mark Arnn with the Vallejo Independent Bulletin. We're here today with Robin Bernhardt. Uh, Robin is the art collection manager at UC Davis. Did I get that right? You did. Okay. And you have been brought in to consult and uh, work with some of the recently discovered uh, lost art treasures of Vallejo. I have. Um, Doug uh, Darling uh, called me and has asked that I do a kind of a conservation assessment and a historical analysis of why and how the works got brought to Vallejo and um, look at their um, kind of state of um, storage and do a report, a formal report for the city. Well, let's, let's, let's give folks a little background. Um, these we're talking about a bunch of uh, public art sculptures. Yes. And um, t when did they come to Vallejo? Give me a little history. So in 1967, there was a redevelopment of downtown um, in this area of uh, to modernize the city. In that um, was a push to put um, artwork in the public. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things I'm also interested in um, researching is who was um, kind of pushed that initiative forward as okay. far as um, who gathered the artists, what were they interested in, and what were the parameters um, for these installations as well. And the reason I'm, I'll go into why I'm interested mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. a little bit later, but um, so there are seven pieces that were installed in 67, and um, they were mostly um, concentrated around the Civic Center. Right. And how long were they on display there? So they would have been on display for about 20 years, I think. Mm -hmm. So then somewhere is around 77. Mm -hmm. No, see, uh, 87. 87. 87. Right. I, I can add. Yeah, I, I know. I can. <laughs> <laughs> the early 90s would be the latest. And then some of them got removed, it seems like. And we're still trying to figure that out. And then 2002, when they extended the Georgia Street Plaza right. through to the Ferry Building, um, they took out um, a couple more pieces, right? the water fountain with the, th the monolithic graph. Um, granite um, got removed and we were around right. at for that to watch that happen. So so basically these are um, pieces of art, public art, sculptures by fairly notable artists I understand. Very notable artists. Okay. Um, so it's interesting to see one each one of them one by one being plucked out of the public sector without okay. much recognition or realization to what we're actually removing. So, so where, where, where are they? I mean, you don't have to tell me specifically, but um, they've been put in storage, have they been, been cared for, or they've been just kind of shoved someplace? A couple of them have been sh moved around, so their locations are unknown, which is kind of, um, a tragedy and I'll talk about some of those pieces that I'm really interested in finding. There are three that we know where their location is and um, it's unclear to us at this point if they were um, put into storage inside of a building at one point and then removed and put into the back of another building for you know 10 almost over a decade. So the ones that we do know where they are um, uh, there's three of them, mm -hmm. and um, that's three out of seven, seven total. Seven total. So more than half are are missing, are and missing unaccounted for, and unaccounted for at okay. this point. So um, that's not to say that they're not around. It's just that we haven't mm -hmm. had enough time to really go through right, and find right. out, you know, or assistance from the city mm -hmm. to locate them. Okay. Well, some of the pieces I, I have them written down here. One is uh, genius. Yes, that's Carl Millais, uh -huh. and he's a really well-known um, sculptor. Um, uh, you know, from the 19th century, he studied under Rodin. He came to this country, um, and he was actually the head of the sculpture department at Cranbrook, which is in uh, Michigan. So he's um, in that when we un veiled that we went to the back of the site where the crates were being stored and it was the largest crate um, there and uh, I had a feeling that it was in there and uh, Doug was like no way it's not in there and when we popped it open just to see that sculpture it was it's so magnificent it's um, figurative how, how large 
It's about um, oh, how large is that? Like six feet. So it's it's, it's life size. It's life size, and um, in its original state, it would have been installed on a very high pedestal, so it would be very monolithic, mm -hmm. and you would kind of look up at it because it has wings to it, and uh, and um, it's kind of crouched over, and it looks like it's going to fly away. It's completely gorgeous mm -hmm. I was very we were both very excited that that was the first find and and hidden from public view for all these years all these years and I think no one knew that it was here and that is probably one of the most significant works to the collection mm -hmm. so I think we feel positive that um, we're going to be able to um, find the rest of them because of that no no I, I keep hearing about um, one of the unaccounted works uh, Space Daisy right uh, by uh, Bella Feldman yes. is the artist, and she's yeah. local. She's in Berkeley, right? She's in Berkeley, and um, one of the she's living and working, and uh, a working artist. Um, she just had a major show. Um, well, she was on Spark as well, KQED's Spark, mm -hmm. which is a always reviews like great artists. So um, I encourage everyone to like look at that. But she makes these really, she has always been kind of, um, she does interactive work with glass and steel. Mm -hmm. And um, she um, also has is in major collections like the De Rosa. She's mm -hmm. an SF MoMA. So it's a, it's a work we should find. Right. And she's living here in the Bay Area. So so notable and and, uh, and important active. piece historically yeah. as, as well. And as a, a woman artist, mm -hmm. I have to say, a, a sculptress that um, continues for over, you know, 50 years or something I, uh, to make artwork. Okay. That's huge. Tell me, tell me about some of the other uh, pieces that are in this. So one of the other group. pieces that I'm really excited about um, is um, Frida Koblick and it was a fountain and um, it's on Georgia Street and the the pool is still on Georgia Street so it's opposite from the structure and you can right. still visit it the plaque is still on the um, waiting pool um, one of the great things about her is and that's at the at the if I remember correctly at the at the foot of uh, Virginia Street right? yes no right near the library near the library so Find a place where um, so where the old, the redwood structure is, right across the way from that, right okay. across the street from George on Georgia, oh, up, where okay. the farmers market is. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I and if you and right. there's like all of these um, kiosks mm -hmm. near it, and I think you know it, it's in that little plaza where there's a big painting on the uh, on the upper. Right. Right. The little the little pocket park there. That's right. right. There. That's but, right. But the. The pool is still there, but the, the pool sculpture is still there, is, is and the not. plaque for the sculpture is still installed mm -hmm. onto the waiting pool kind of thing or the right, fountain. Right, right. But what's notable about her is she kind of was the, one of the first experimental artists in San Francisco, and she um, worked with plastic. And she got her engineering degree. She got an engineering degree and a degree in plastics. And in the 60s, she it's was like the graduate. Yeah, teacher is plastic. Right, right, and she made the the most incredible realization that the the art world on the West Coast wasn't going to be ready for her abstract work. Mm -hmm. So she started doing um, architectural elements okay and then continued to make her artwork mm -hmm. and she died in 2011 but um, again uh, always made artwork Th but she w worked in cast plastic which is right, acrylic um, and such which was new at the that time that was very new and experimental at the time so so does it does that make this piece I mean uh, you know is it particularly rare because you said she went into architectural no she continued like to do cast resin okay. um, but no one was doing that mm -hmm. and again another female artist in so. san francisco kind of that counterculture artist um experimental so, work so very innovative in, in what she was doing exactly i mean now you see a lot of things done with with right. plastics and so on so but she was you have to trailblazer. you have to come back to the 60s and kind of right, look at right. it through that lens right. a little bit it, it was new and they weren't you know sure about it right and she wasn't sure where it was going to go. So that one I'm, I'm really interested. And she also got a Guggenheim Fellowship in her, right. um, in, the, in 1970. And then um, one of the things that I ha I've probably, we've all probably walked by it, but she has a piece at SFO in their collection right mm -hmm. in front, right in the um, United Terminal. Okay. So again, another significant artist. Okay. And uh, we do have one, uh, one of the sculptures is still there, the structure by mm -hmm. Stefan Novak, which yeah. uh, a lot of people have seen that's um, also on Georgia Street. And it's this big 
sort of a Lincoln log kind of looking thing. I don't right. know if that's sacrilege to say <laughs> that, but well, you have to it's, think it's of redwood and bolted, and yeah. it's it's kind of set set back um, next to the it's 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 near where the the, uh, the post office right uh, across the street in and, a little and, uh, courtyard right you have to think also that that building that was right on the corner mm -hmm. would not have been there and the incredibly he, ugly that's right formed building with the pillars that's right yes so that would not have been there and what that work was supposed to represent was the dry do or the docks and the piers uh -huh, of uh -huh. Mare Island. And you should have been able to see the vista of the water. So what it's losing is its environment. The surroundings. That's right. And again, another kind of notable artist um, teaching at UC Berkeley most of his life. He taught architecture, but all of his work was in redwood and it was carved and it was structural like that, very architectural. Um, and a lot of pieces in San Francisco throughout Pichero Hill and Bernal Hill and, um, and in Berkeley as well. So I think there's a way to kind of address all the issues that that has right now. Um, like, you know, the signs in front of it, all the, you can't see it, um, no right. client, like it's right. just... Kind of buried in there and, yeah. And, and this People don't really know what it is. They think, well, what is it, some kind of right. jungle gym or something? Right, yeah. and with the city putting the sign directly in front of it kind of ruins, kind of ruins everything, the whole thing. yeah, about it. I mean, what would you like to see happen? Do you think you'd like to see that, that piece moved? I think better? that piece should be moved yeah. just because its original intention actually is to have an environment of the water around right, it. Right. And I think a little education piece about like what the intent was um, could help people mm -hmm. see better. Right, right. Um, let's talk about some of the other pieces. There's one called uh, Silent Company by right. Gordon Newell. Right. Is, is that a, one that you've located or is that still on the missing list? So that one we were around for when it was removed. So that was 2002. Okay. So that would have been that fountain that was between the p post office and the library. And it mm -hmm. had four monolithic granite pieces that came okay. out of the water. Do you remember that? Not so, really, to what, be uh, honest. That's really interesting to me because um, I remember when they removed well, you it. You were an art curator, so yeah. you, you would notice. I, I do notice like when things move and I always say, why did that happen? Um, so he was a really, he is a really important artist. And um, when he studied under Ralph Stackpole, so Ralph Stackpole was a um, WPA artist and he did all of these major figures works in San Francisco, one of them being the, um, the Stock Exchange building, and very figurative, very 1930s. Um, so he studied underneath him, and he always lived in, on, um, on the West Coast. He lived in Vallejo, he was a teacher, um, he's in the LA County Museum, the San Diego Museum, he's in SF MoMA. Um, I think he's a really interesting artist. He's very minimal, he always works in granite. Um, uh, I think that kind of artwork is hard for people to get to because it's so austere. Um, and sometimes you just walk right by that. It's almost like his hand isn't in that um, piece a little bit for the outsider, but it, it was a gorgeous piece. Um, so I was really quite surprised when it left. Um, I, I have visions for that piece, and I think the water element um, that kind of got wrapped around that was that was the only thing strange to me because I think all of his other pieces just kind of rise out of the ground. But anyways, um, the intention of that was so that people would have a resting place. So they would walk down Georgia Street and have like a quiet moment to sit down and enjoy um, kind of the environment next to the water. So it was supposed to stop people mm -hmm. from passing through. Sort of impo like a presence. That's right. In a sense. Right. Rather than something where you go, oh, you know, look you at You just the, drive uh, by, right by yeah. it, so. But it creates a, a sense of. of yeah, a, a respite, a time mm -hmm. to, you know, reflect and sit down and slow down. And he, they put benches around it so that they created an environment for it. Right. And it, so we, what other pieces are there? Oh, uh, boy. Give me, give me the rundown. The few. last one I think we haven't gone. Oh, there's two. There's there's two. two there's more. Um, the Betty Rascott, which um, is the bust 
of the Times Herald, the founder of the Times Herald. Mr. Gibson. Gibson. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I wondered if you had any feelings about that. I was going to interview you. Uh, interview me. Yeah. About, about, about what? Luther Gibson. About Luther Gibson. If you, if you knew his I I, I know, qualities. I, I know the name. Yeah. Um, you know, he seems to have been highly regarded in his day. Uh, very For, highly regarded. Very. I think. From what I could gather, he was a real mover and shaker in town and uh, influential, but yeah. I, I don't know a huge amount about The him. only thing I found out about him, which I thought was kind of interesting, there used to be three newspapers in town, and what he did right. was to bring them all together under one umbrella called yes. the Times Herald as we yes. know it now. But I don't know which if has that... has gotten thinner in mm, recent yeah, years, I, unfortunately. I think he wouldn't be really happy with it, Maybe. but I'm not really yeah. sure. But so all I, print newspapers are struggling these days. Of course. Yeah. It's got to be a hard business. Yeah. And they're ch changing the way that they report, so I think that's good. But anyways, the point is, um, so that another woman artist. Mm -hmm. so right. Another woman artist so in this collection. So you got to wonder, you know, what was the... Um, Who is curating words, this? It seems like it was a very progressive... It's a very uh, progressive uh, collection for yeah. the 60s. I cannot believe it. The more I think about it and the more I review what it is, it's astounding. It's astounding that. Isn't that? So, I mean, hearing you, someone who no works with that. art, and and using a word like astounding, mm -hmm. um, in connection with this, I think that really puts it in in, in, in perspective when you say that. And and um, I mean, you look at some of the treasures that we have in Vallejo, historical, artistic. Um, obviously, there's the McCune room and mm -hmm. some of the printed material mm -hmm. there, which is is really quite yes, astounding stuff. Yes, that is too. Um, and, and, and here we have something else that really was under the radar. Mm -hmm. That you and use that very thought. undervalued. Mm -hmm. Very undervalued. And I think every time they modernize something and they pick something out like that and they right. put it aside, they didn't do the full research that they needed to do to understand why is this here and contextualize it and why is it important. Right, right. And every time you remove one part of that, you lose a major... Um, part of history and why things were happening and that's the sad part about it so, so let's let's uh let's sum up what oh i want to talk about yeah. um i do want to talk about betty rascott okay because yes. when it so not only about with the bust but another woman artist and uh um she in 1943 she taught sculpture on Mar at the mare island navy base oh so she has a, a real history here that's right Okay. Yeah, and I think that's really important and unusual too. Okay, so that's it's it's all part of the mm -hmm. the, the broader history, and it's interesting. I mean, why were they teaching sculpture on the Navy base? I and I that. have that question too. That's yeah. another kind of research. Like every time I read about the artist, or I've, it brings more questions of, and it kind of links everything together. Mm -hmm. And it's probably one of the reasons she got chosen to, um, you know produced the bust of Gibson. Um, also, you know, her uh, main focus on artwork or her body of work, and she's still living to this day too, mm -hmm. um, is the figurative work in women's issues. Right. Have you tried to track down and, and talk to any of these artists to ask them about? Well, there's two remaining that right. are living, both women, right. and Bella has been contacted by Doug, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure about Betty, but I would really, um, I think, it's probably something we should do because I can't even imagine some of the historical right. um, kind of content that she could give us for this work now, or the collection or, you know, there's just countless things that she may be able to help us with. Right. Now, now, how long have you guys been uh, pursuing this? I know it's been a while. I've talked to Doug a bit about it. Gosh, you know, I tried to remember less than a year. Okay. Yeah. Less, maybe six months, eight months at the most. And I'm sure that he's been working on it longer than I have. I was brought in to really um, go look at the site and the crates and start doing an analysis really of the um, condition of the works and to see if we could bring them back. Yeah. And, and how is the condition? I mean, are they in reasonably good shape or is there damage to any of these things? Well, it's hard to tell and it's hard. I mean, what's happened um, um, is that because they've been stored outside for more than a decade, maybe less, um, all the crates are falling in on the sculptures and the way that they packed them. Um, I'm not able to look at, you know, all, all the parts there, okay. you know. So we what, still what do you want to see the city do to... to 
Well, I think now that we know where three of the major pieces are. So, so which, are, now which three are accounted for? We've got so genius, genius. the um, silent, um, what's it called? Si star silent silent company. company. And then also the bust of Gibson. Of Gibson. Yeah. Okay. So those three would have been right outside the library. Right. And, and the missing ones is Space Daisy. Right. And Space Daisy Triad, which is the plexi. The plexiglass. Yeah, water and, fountain. Right. Um, and then there's this bias, 60 foot bias relief made out of bronze. Of That is a historical account of Mare Island. And that mm. would have been installed. I said they, th they said Independence Park, and I'm assuming that Six, means. 60 foot long, sort of. Like a, a wall. Like almost. a wall. Yeah. That's. Do you think it would have been like. like cast bronze panels or mm -hmm. something? It's panels, exactly. Yeah, so okay. that one's missing. And who, who was the artist of They said of Martin Metal, and I don't know what that means. Um, that's one I haven't, we, I just haven't. Martin Metal? It yeah. sounds like a foundry. Yeah, it's a foundry, but I don't know. When you see the um, the panels, they're definitely like kind of WPA kind of looking, okay. you know, okay. with like workers going to so you have island. pictures, we but have you, pictures. you don't know where the, no, we the don't know where panels that is. themselves are. And I think it would have been done by an artist cast by Martin Meadows. Right, right. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes gotcha. more sense. Sure, sure. And so the other, the last one that, and there's a lot of um, plaques too, mm -hmm. and I, we have not done a full inventory of When you say that. plaques? Like commemorative, like um, ones that say um, uh, James A. Richards, a man among men, things like that. So. Okay. You imagine know. he was. I don't know who he is. I just haven't had. A no, you know, I'm more right. focused on the sculptures sure, just sure. now. So but those, like those, that. those are in being are stored, or are those unaccounted for. Those are we don't know yet. We don't know. Yeah. But they're a part of the whole. They're part of the whole, the whole redevelopment. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what are the next? What, what What are the next steps with this? Now that we have discovered some, well, obviously we want to locate the missing ones. We want to. I want to locate a lot of the missing ones. Definitely. Right. I mean, it's a, a collection is only as strong as it, all of its parts. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two is to go in and actually have help from the city um, to um, open up all those crates and do a real assessment mm -hmm. of the condition of the current artwork century. Um, Doug has been doing a lot of work um, going back into um, the files of what was intended when they were removed and what was agreed upon when they were removed. Right. In other words, they, they may have gotten monies to remove them and or... And store them. And store them. And, and may have, and I, from what I've seen, they agreed that they would go back into the public. And, and so far that hasn't happened. And that has not happened. So make the city accountable mm -hmm. for um, what they agreed upon. So, so there it is to... Uh, message to City Hall. That's right. You need to complete the, the promise complete the to project. restore and put the artwork back. Right. right. And I think, you know, it doesn't have any, the, their agreement has nothing to do with restoration, but at this point, because of the negligence of the way that they stored them, they so should would, be accountable for that. you would characterize the storage as being negligent? Absolutely, yeah. unfortunately. Now, if they had put those inside, they would be, um, you know, they could be in better conditions. Right, right. So they're they're they've been stored outside for many years. The crates are falling apart. They're falling Maybe in on the uh, you know the okay. surfaces are. Um, they all need cleaning. Mm -hmm. uh, Genius needs to be. Um, the patina is um, when you see it and um, it's kind of um, dripping down. Oh, not the. It, sorry, the surface has needs to be stripped back to its original intent mm -hmm. and waxed and you know. Cared yes, for and care for. made presentable. Yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess part of the question is if, is whether, you know, where would the where would the funding come from to, right. to do this? Because obviously, uh, you know, money is, is always tight in Vallejo. Mm -hmm. We've got potential some budget shortfalls next year, uh, what they're talking about. So that's, that's one of the real... Mm -hmm. It is I a guess. real problem, and that's the other step that I've been trying to um, talk to Doug about is put a committee in place, put an art and public places committee in place with people who um, are influential in the city, um, who care about, um, uh, you know, this program. And really, um, I've we've had to do this um, at Davis, put in because we have 11 pieces in the public. Um, and once you have a collection, you qualify for grants, federal mm -hmm. grants. 
So there may be some, some federal then, monies yes. to, to bring this stuff back and restore right. it. But you would have to have that total collection and the historical documentation to kind of um, validate why you need help. And Vallejo obviously fits that. Right, right. So is that something that you'd get involved in or you're... I have done that for Davis, so mm -hmm. I could see myself kind of going down that path with Vallejo. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for your your enthusiasm, help, and, right. and, and knowledge about all this. Um, it, it sounds like really an exceptional uh, artistic treasure. Uh, in a lot of ways, I mean, I have to say another exceptional artistic treasure in Vallejo, uh, one that's been forgotten, and uh, that you and Doug, to your credit, have been persistent and, and brought to the public attention. Um, so um, I guess in, in sort of in, in, in summing up, is there anything you'd like to say about the whole collection and what you'd like to... Well, I think one of the great things that, w or one of the things that we really need to do is have people um, of the community kind of get involved with this and, 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 and even write letters, emails, um, take pictures, come to the city council, mm -hmm. just kind of sh sh show some support for this kind of project right. that they want it, that they um, re um, expect the city to deliver on their promises. Because two people alone finding art tr artwork in the is not going to make them come back. So the bottom line is people need to step up and let City Hall know that we appreciate art in Vallejo yeah. and we want to see our, our public art That would be super helpful. On display. Mm -hmm. I would love that. So when is the, at the next council meeting on the 14th? It's Tuesday at 7 p.m. And and this is this on the this agenda? This is on the agenda so um, it would be super helpful if we had a force. So that's, that's the magic word, art lovers, enthusiasts, and people interested. October 14th, <laughs> be there, let City Council know. We'd like to see this stuff brought back, we'd like to see it taken care of, and we'd like to see this public art treasure in Vallejo protected. Right, and I hope that I wasn't too crazy on the education part, but I really believe that if we know who the artists are, we have a better appreciation of what the collection is consisted of. It was ve very interesting, Good. because otherwise, I, folks like me don't know yeah. <laughs> but it, it's 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 fascinating and, and impressive yeah robin thank you Thanks so much thank you for your time yeah, and thank all you. your work it was great